Hi, I'm Jim Stroud, and this is my podcast. On November 28th, He Jian Ku, a postdoctoral fellow at Stanford, announced to hundreds of scientists, colleagues, and journalists that he had created the world's first genetically edited babies, twin girls with the pseudonyms Lulu and Nana, whose DNA he claims to have altered to make them HIV resistant. Although not verified, He's work has been met with international outcry. Many consider such work to be an unethical violation of scientific norms. And amid conflicting reports about his current whereabouts, he, John Koo, has not been heard from since he made that announcement. Now, I find all of this fascinating. Not only do I see the scientific community and society at large changed irrevocably by this technological breakthrough, I foresee major headaches for the HR department. <laughs> Why? Well, I'll let you know after this special message. Ooh, sorry guys, gotta take this call uh, one second. Hello, Jim Strout. Hey Jim, I have to postpone our lunch meeting. I'm searching for the perfect candidate and my ATS is not making it easy. Mmm, that didn't sound like fun. What about your CRM? Don't even get me started. How many times have you had the perfect resume in hand and wish you could find more people just like them? Uh, every day? Well, you know what you need, right? You need a system that learns from you and suggests the right candidates at the right time. It doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, yes, it does. And his name is Hiring Saul. Hiring Saul? Hiring Saul is a tool that uses AI and machine learning to automate candidate matching, increase diversity, reduce time to fill analyze the social web, and, and even unlock the power of your ATS, CRM, and HRIS data. Hmm, interesting. Can you tell me more? I would like to, but I'm about to do this podcast. Uh, but I, I tell you what, I tell you what. Check out their website at www.hiringsolve.com. Okay, www.hiringsolve.com. That's right, just like it sounds, www.hiringsolved.com. Go look at it now, and I'll call you back right after the podcast. Okay, bye. Okay, sorry about that. Um, hmm, where was I? Have you seen the movie Gattaca? It was out in the late 90s, uh, 97, I believe. Uh, here's a uh, clip from the movie trailer. Genetics, what can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. In the not too distant future, our DNA will determine everything about us. A minute drop of blood saliva, or a single hair determines where you can work, who you should marry, what you're capable of achieving. In the movie Gattaca, Vincent Freeman, played by Ethan Hawke, has always fantasized about traveling into outer space, but he is grounded by his genetically inferior status. He decides to fight his fate by purchasing the genes of Jerome Morrow, played by Jude Law, who has been determined to be genetically superior. <laughs> Vincent assumes Jerome's DNA identity and joins the Gattaca space program where he falls in love with Irene, played by Uma Thurman. An investigation into the death of a Gattaca officer complicates Vincent's plans. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's a good movie with a lot of suspense and twists and turns, that kind of thing. Um, I recommend it. Check it out. Welcome to Gattaca. As I said earlier, Ki Jean Ku's research is not verified, so nobody knows for sure if he really did create the world's first genetically edited babies resistant to HIV, but I don't think it's too far fetched to believe. In 2017, scientists in the United States successfully corrected a disease-causing mutation by altering the genetic structure of a human embryo, 
which means genes that carry certain diseases uh, would not be passed on to newborns. Now, if you do a search on designer babies, you will find a lot, and I do mean a lot, of articles discussing the ethics and the history of the science. Some people say that designing babies is a good thing, while others poo-poo the idea. <laughs> Here's a breakdown of the pros and the cons. First, the pros. Designing babies would mean that you not only reduce the risk of genetic diseases today, but you also stop diseases from being passed on to future generations. And because you can enhance intelligence through this process, at least from what I've read, there's a better chance the child will succeed in life. One could also give their child genes that neither of the parents carry. So, for example, uh, musical and dance giftings. Imagine your child being the next Beyonce, despite the fact that you and your spouse struggle with karaoke. And um, the biggest plus to designing children, I suppose, uh, would be a better understanding of how genetics increase lifespan. So, does that mean immortality? Uh, I doubt it. But it might mean that the average person may one day live to be 100 years old. And now, um, the arguments against designing children. As heartless as it may sound to some, I can foresee many pregnancies terminated simply because the genetic recipe was flawed in some way. Maybe the hair wasn't blonde enough, or uh, the IQ was not high enough, and the parents demand optimum IQ for their child so that they can compete in modern society. <laughs> Geneticists are not perfect. Maybe, maybe getting rid of one disease sparks the genesis of another one that is even more deadly, and because it's so new, there's no way to treat it. And before you know it, we are surrounded by zombies from The Walking Dead. <laughs> and I'm only halfway kidding. In the rush to make perfect children, I can see us forgetting the children who have no say in how their genes are being manipulated. Maybe they discover later in life that they have talents that they do not desire and decide to rebel against their parents. And in the case of being a musical genius, utterly refuse to sing, no matter how much their parents implore them. Maybe they would feel the loss of individuality and be stuck in a sort of limbo, somewhere between discovering what they want to do with their lives and what their parents designed them to be. And if that is not enough, there are the issues that the Human Resources Department <laughs> will have to face. What are the ramifications of employing adults who were once designer babies? On the plus side, companies that focus on hiring designer babies can brag that they offer exorbitant health care benefits because it's unlikely certain diseases and conditions would even occur with designer babies since those conditions were likely screened out at birth. Designer babies would tend to have IQs higher than the natural average due to their genetic enhancement, so companies who hired them would likely be more efficient, productive, and innovative. Designer babies would be better educated and have lots of business contacts as they tend to come from wealthy families that can afford designer baby enhancements. With all of these advantages, it's no wonder companies hire as many designer babies as they can find and do all they can to retain them, but isn't that discriminatory to natural born humans? What happens when natural born humans figure out why they're not being considered for high paying jobs at the same rate as these designer babies? Will they protest and file lawsuits against the company? And if they do, how would that affect the employer brand of the company? As expensive as it would be, at least in the onset, 
to have designer children, most of the hiring population would be natural born humans. This means that no matter how many designer babies you hire, it's likely the majority of the people you hire will be natural born and they won't want to work for a company who denies them upward mobility. As such, HR department, you have a massive recruiting problem, which in turn is a massive bottom line problem because if your employment brand is bad, it only stands to reason that the consumer side will soon follow. So, for the record, I am against genetic manipulation for the sake of making perfect children. I think the ethics prohibit us from going down this path and would encourage things, horrible things, like the killing of offspring with Down syndrome. They do that in Iceland, you know. And who can say how all of the uh, genetic manipulation will affect future offspring? What happens when a designer baby mates with another designer baby? What happens when a designer baby mates with a natural human? What happens when two people have children naturally, but one of them or both have a designer baby in their lineage? Nobody knows now, but thanks to scientists like He Jean Ku, we will in the future. And we'll know it for better or worse. If you love what you heard, hate what you heard, or don't know what you just heard, I want to know about it. You can reach me on my website, www.jimstroud.com. In addition to finding source material and related information for this podcast episode, you'll find other goodies that I hope will make you smile. Oh, before I go, uh, please financially support this podcast with a little something, something in my virtual tip jar. There's a link in the podcast description. Your generosity encourages me to keep this podcast train chugging down the track 